All right, welcome back to episode 15. We are just pumping these episodes out, and I got no intentions to stop anytime soon. So here we are, and guess who's back, baby? We got Patrick Rooney Bye. returning to the rally report because <laughs> we didn't milk enough content from him last time. <laughs> no, Ellie was taking up too much spotlight, wasn't he? Yeah, never going to happen again. <laughs> No, but um, I, I'd say he's he's got one of the best hands in the business and a really play, uh, really a player to watch out for 2022. Uh, welcome back, Pat. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks for that compliment as well. <laughs> Hopefully, I can keep those hands. It's the only thing I've got. <laughs> That's not true. Let's let's uh, let's start. <laughs> um, are you, so some... are you, are you back in England right now for league matches? I've got two weeks of training in between. Um, Detroit and Washington, so I'm back. I'm midway through that like little training block. It, it, yeah, it was just the two week gap out there just didn't make make sense for me to stay. So I came back and got some good training in at home. So if you stayed in the US, would you say you didn't really have a place to really train at? Is that why you went back? Um, I probably I, I would probably go near to Stanford area. Cause I know Elliot well. Oh yeah, he yeah. would have me at his place. Um, but yeah, two weeks was just a bit too long, so. I thought it was worth coming back. Yeah, as excited. I, I was looking at your schedule, and it seems pretty jam packed in February. So I guess. So yeah, I'm, like... I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to work out which tournaments I'm going to play and which I'm not at the minute. Because mm -hmm. at the minute, I could play I don't know eight or nine tournaments leading up to June. So I'm just I'm deciding which ones to to play and which not. Yeah, yeah it's a difficult one. Yeah. Well, so okay. So how how are you feeling? I, I don't want to start off this episode on a downer, but. I wanted to dive in. <laughs> no, where, no, go, yeah, yeah go. With where your where your where your headspace is at with your recent results, and I just want to you know mention this because you know this sport ain't all sunshines and rainbows twenty four seven, and there's a harsh no, reality no, not, to no. it. So I mean, you made a <laughs> comical uh, meme out of it in your Instagram story a couple days ago, but oh yeah, yeah I just, didn't see that, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, just talk to us about how you're feeling in general, and you know, I want to touch upon your recent um, result. Yeah, so towards the end of last year. I was getting, I was getting good points in my tournaments, but I wasn't quite playing my best. So it, it kind of looked like I was progressing, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of like leveled out in my uh, the way I was playing. I think that's starting to show now because I'm, like, I've come up against Seb, who is a good player. Yeah, but say like because of the ranking, you would say like on paper I should beat him. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it, he played well. Like fair play to him. Um, but I was disappointed to lose three 0 and um, yeah, it just leaves you in a headspace where you think you're not you're not progressing as you should be. So you have to like reset and work out what the problem is and go from there. Really, do you have a do you have a routine of like how to reset, or are you are you still trying to figure that out? I'm actually yeah. I, usually I can figure it out quite quickly. I'm quite good at that, but this time I'm I'm still working on it. Fuck, uh, it's a work it's a work in progress. But yeah, um, yeah, it just goes back to like like making notes like where where you went wrong what you could improve on and then going back to training like having like my talks with different coaches and working out like where do we go from here what's the training plan and then how do we execute it well i, I want to talk about this because there was a buzz kind of all over you at around the summertime yeah. of 2021 you were you know you're getting media traction by psa did you yeah. think that also played a factor into that getting into your head well, I thought at the time, like, um, yeah, I'm getting a bit of attention now because I've had a few decent matches. Mm -hmm. So I try. I said to myself, right, don't let that go to your head. Like, don't don't be one of those people who you know thinks they're good when they're they're not quite that good yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, maybe maybe it did, and um, maybe I've taken a step back. I changed a few things in my training, which probably weren't the we the best choices. Um, but now like, I'm trying to. Like fix those those issues. Well, I don't know if they're issues. That's what that's what I mean. Like I'm trying to work. <laughs> I'm trying to work out the best way to go from here. So yeah. I thought I was doing really well, and then like I've dropped a bit. But that's what like that's what um, sports all about, isn't it? Like you, you see that in a lot of players. Like they they like that, then they have a dip mm -hmm. like that. It's just how you come back from that dip. And yeah, I'm just I'm doing that at the minute. Well, I want to go back to what you said earlier about. So that there was a patch in 2021, you were gaining a lot of traction, you're doing well, but you're saying right now that you didn't really necessarily feel that that was your best squash. Uh, no, the, uh, yeah, the first half of 2021 was probably my best squash mm -hmm. I've played. 
um, ever. Um, it's just after that. So the the later half of 2021, I was getting good points. So I, was, I reached, I think, two, two last 16 um, in, in a platinum event. So that that for me is like huge points, and mm. I can it moves my ranking up, I'm like guaranteed. But the way I got there was was not necessarily my best best squash. I I was I was ten eight down, ten eight match ball down in one, and nine six down in the fifth in another. So I had to like use that experience that I've got now to like come through those matches, mm-hmm. which is which which I, at the time I found as a positive, because I, like two two three years ago I would have just my head would have fell off and I would have lost those matches like like that but because I've gained a bit of experience playing these tournaments now I think I was able to come through those matches which yeah. I took as a positive well you're also in a weird spot because you're in your career high ranking 28 and that's I feel that's yeah. <laughs> it's strange isn't it yeah I feel that's like the oddest part to be on a ranking where you're not really the top top player but you got so many guys just coming after yeah. you right below you who were just as much coming up yeah. as well as you does is that a pressure point for you as well with your ranking um i don't see it as much as that because i'm i'm still i still see myself as one of the chasers mm-hmm. like i'm chasing the top the top players so i'm still looking ahead but you are conscious of who's behind you and who's chasing after you it's yeah. just um yeah, I, w- I, w- I don't put all my focus on that, but like everybody's so hungry to like improve at the minute. I feel yeah. like you're feeling it from everyone. Like, everyone's like really going for it, um, and I'm just following my own path, trying to find find a way. Yeah, it's it's hard not to get distracted when Gina Kennedy's just sweeping these tournaments. Left yeah, yeah, she's yeah, <laughs> she's impressive. It's fucking she? ridiculous what, what she's 100, doing. <laughs> Hundred and I, I called that by the way. Yeah, you did. You did call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, did I get that? Yeah, you got that right with the prediction oh, right. thing. What did I, say? I think you were saying like, I think we were uh, saying something about yeah, she can't pass Gina uh, SJ, and then you were like, I don't know about that, or something. No, I've been saying that for a while. I yeah. said, I said at some point in 2022, I would call top five. So I'm going to stick with that. She, yeah, it's not far away, is it? She's really not far. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but let's look at your uh, February schedule. You so you got yeah. squash on fire. Which is coming up, and you're you're supposed to play Alan Klein, and then you know obviously you got an incredible draw with Shabagi up yeah. right next. Easy one, <laughs> little easy one. But well, no, but but at the, at the minute I'm I'm focusing fully on Alan Klein. Yeah, yeah. Not not even looking at um, Shabagi. Uh, yeah, I just, if I if I play well, I I think I can win definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like the week and a half leading up to that tournament has got to be uh, spot on. So are you like setting a game plan for Alan Klein going into this and you're talking with your coaches? Like, how does that look like when you know the draw beforehand and you know who you're playing or do you usually just focus on yourself? No, I, I, I do discuss game plans because um, it's different for every player, isn't yeah. it? But I think this, leading up to this tournament, it's more about like getting myself really fired up for it. I get my mental like... My mental game like up there where it was like a few months ago where I'm like I'm not gonna let anything stop me from winning like that kind of mentality yeah. I'm gonna go on there and go 100% like balls out trying to beat him uh, yeah so that's, that's what I'm trying to do tactical <laughs> tactically like there will be a bit of that close to the tournament like mm-hmm. that's more like I'd say a few days before the tournament yeah like to keep it fresh yeah, yeah. and then on the day I'll really like hone into what I'm gonna do on like in the now on court um, but the the pre work now is more like I think it's more of a mental thing, really. Yeah. And then I looked at your Windy City Open draw. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you're playing Sebastian again. Well, let's let's go into yeah. the uh, match itself. Um, what do you think went well? What do you think went wrong in that match in particular when you played him in the Motor City Open? I think. I started slow in the first. Like I think he got a seven-two lead. Mm-hmm. So that 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 that's not great, is it? <laughs> Letting your opponent go seven-two up in the first game. Uh, so I, I would say like start strong. Like have a yeah. like strong first game. I, mean, I guess um, you're banking way too much on your experience nowadays. Just letting letting guys. Yeah, I can't. Like, no, you can't let experience. You can't be fully <laughs> relying on experience. Um, and then I think a lot of errors came from mm-hmm. me. 
obviously Sebastian picks up a lot of shots. He was picking up some really good shots for me, and then I'd have to like reset the rally and do it again. And then yeah, it was just I wasn't quite disciplined enough to to put that shot in that one extra time, and then few few too many errors for me. And he closed out the third. Was there anything about his game that threw you off that you weren't expecting from him? Um, no. You, so you knew what, you knew what you were going going yeah. into, yeah. Um, yeah, like you watch you watch your opponent play, and yeah. I've, I've known I've known Seb like for since junior times. Like he, I've watched him play; I know what he does. Yeah, I don't think there's many surprises there, and he's the same with me. He knows he, put, he knows how I play. Yeah. It's just I didn't quite didn't quite play my best on the day, and he he was yeah he was playing well. Okay, and then if I don't know if you've looked into that draw, but if you do beat him, I think you're playing James. Um, I'm not looked at. I'm not looked past Seb. No, so I can't comment on that. Got it. Well, you know what? I'm looking past for you, and I. Oh no, it's uh, no, Joel it's, Macon. Uh, it's Joel Macon. Yeah, Joel yeah, Macon. yeah. Sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I have looked actually. Which. <laughs> <laughs> which you also have a big history with um well you had some brutal five gamers right <laughs> we've had one bruce of five gamers and about seven three <laughs> three loves you know what? all i remember is the yeah. five gamers so yeah we'll just stick to that he doesn't get enough credit for the other seven three loves, but <laughs> i'll take the three two but yeah i don't want to like make, well force day. you to look ahead but is there would that matchup excite you or is that something that you is he the type of player that you um, dread playing against? No, no. Seb was a good one to draw because it, then it gives me a chance to, you know, get my my, my revenge, get my payback. Yeah, yeah. Thing. <laughs> like, you get your motivation from that, and so yeah. I was actually quite glad to um, draw him. Like, I've got a chance to like like prove myself again, and then Joel. Um, it's similar. You know what you're getting with Joel. It's pretty straightforward, you say. <laughs> yeah, um, it's going to be incredibly hard, and you know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd take any top player because it's a chance to like play them, get improved, see see what they're doing well, mm-hmm. uh, and learn from. I don't think I don't think there's yeah a player in the top ten. I would say that I didn't want to draw because I just I see it like that. I see it as a chance to you know gain experience, and improve. Yeah. So right now you're back home right now. It's, is that yeah. where is that exactly? So I'm living in Leeds at the minute. Mm-hmm. Leeds is Yorkshire. It's it's not far from Pontefract. Okay, and that's your main club. That's my main club. Yeah, and who- playing out of there three or four times a week. And I, I want to talk to you about this because earlier in the month I saw you were tra- training with Rob Owen. Mark, did I get that right? Yeah, I was I was there for match play with Paul. Oh, okay. So you weren't there. Rob kindly oh. invited me down to give Paul a game. I didn't give him much of a game, but um, I tried my best. Did did, yeah. did Rob give you any pointers? And I asked this because there's some unbelievable hype around Rob Owen right now, considering you know yeah, what he's no, he did, what he's yeah, done yeah. with Paul Cole. But is that is that something you noticed as well when you walked in there? You were like, wow, this is something different. Like what they're we're crafting up over here. Or is it just, um, do you think it's more of a relationship thing that he and Paul Cole has? I think, I think there's a, I think there's a science to what he does. I think there's. What do you mean by that? I, th- I think, I think if you did what he, if you followed his way of doing things and did it the way he wants you to do, I think, I think it was it's fact. It's fact that you would you would improve. I think for a certain player, because he, the the way he like does things technically. Um, it's very solid, like mm-hmm. it's consistent, and um, like the way the way he comes across, he's like he obviously knows what he's talking about. So it is part of the, the relationship, and it's like he's got uh, yeah. It's like it's like um, I don't know. It's like the way Malcolm used to do things. I think yeah, he had a system that I and I, I follow. I followed it. I believed in it fully, mm-hmm. um, and I I still do try to play that way now. Um, and I thought, if all right, if I play this way, I, I feel like I'm definitely going to get to where I want to go. Because I've seen I've seen the plays that he's produced, and yeah, I think it was similar to that. I think there, there is a lot of hype around it because he does improve. 
those top players that he's yeah I, I don't know if you've played with paul cole before or if this was your first time actually in him do you think something has changed what as a player what have you noticed that's different i think he's added i think he's added a lot of like skill layers to his game mm -hmm. so so the way the way i was brought up was like skill first then the other stuff after yeah so i was like <laughs> i was very squash squash based yeah Whereas Paul's already got that that solid base of being the you know the fit like machine on court, he's got the movement, he's got the strength and all that. So then I think Rob's added those squash specific layers on top. He's got attacking options now. Yeah. He's, he's consistent to learn. Well, well, I asked this because you know you you have the pro perspective. I I just have a spectator perspective and. You know, when I watch Paul Cole play right now, you know, it looks phenomenal, but I don't see him slapping Knicks every every you know, every point. No, so, no. So it's hard to do, you know, really figure out what he's doing in terms of when he That's that's what I'm Well that's what I mean by like the way Paul, like Rob has improved uh Paul, it's like a science that's what I meant by mm. like it was it's fact that if he if he put his hunt is fully like hundred percent belief into Rob, I think he would improve that way. I think that's what he's done. Yeah. So like you know, like the natural, like ex the way of expressing yourself on court, where you're slapping nicks and hitting weird boasts, and yeah. like the things you just make up on the spot, and you say, "Oh, that's that's cool. Or, mm -hmm. I like, I enjoyed that." It's not so much that. It's so much. It's like okay, if you do this in this way, and you do that in that way, like it, it it'll work. Yeah. You want you want? And I played him, and I, I saw yeah. I, yeah. I I saw it happening. Oh, you did. I would see myself one of those one of those players who just kind of makes things up like, on the spot. Yeah. But again, same like that, that was useless. Oh, uh, as in, as in he, he's reading you better as well. Um, no, I can, I can send him the wrong way, but then he, he'll go and get it like yeah. quite comfortably. <laughs> and then I'll have to re and then he'll, and then he'll reset the rally and then I'll have to yeah. do it again. And then I'll do the same again. It was like, it's just a different level of yeah. like the quality I need to, to beat him. Is so there any, was, anything was, you uh, want to share with us about what Rob Owen told you? Um, no. Damn. <laughs> keep that to myself. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But he definitely um, gave you a couple pointers, though. Gave me a few few pointers, yeah. Because that would have yeah, been brutal yeah. if he invited you over and then just like, thanks, Pat. All right. Like, you, you can leave now. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. He gave me a few points. I think, I think he's like that. I think he like he enjoys helping squash players improve. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm thinking about I'm thinking about things. See see where I can go from here. Interesting. Well, I yeah. asked it because when I saw this in January, I was like, "Oh, is Pat fucking making a move over here? Like completely uh, switching up coaches?" Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not making a move. But I, I'll, I'll, yeah. You, you like to hear advice from most people, but like I'm not going to say no to advice from like, mm -hmm. Rob Owen. Like even if even if I don't I don't have to take it, do I? But yeah, I can. I can I can write it down, can I? And then if if I want it, it's there, you know. Yeah. So it made sense. It made sense. So, like what you said. Made sense. Wow, you're really not. That's all, that's you're really not giving it to me right now. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. No, no. You don't know who's watching, dear. You? you don't know who's watching. <laughs> is that has that ever occurred to you in where you wanted to switch coaches in your career? Not. Not while I'm out with today, no. No, I was, I was, <clears throat> I was fully committed to him, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, com makes complete um, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's there's a there's a few different coaches I work with in England who I I do like take advice off and work with. It's just that the guy I'd go to for like like after a tournament or pre pre tournament. For like to make me feel like like the best I can be on court would probably be Mal. I would mm -hmm. go to one of his his sessions and come away feeling like, all right, I can I can do well in this tournament now. I feel like I'm playing really well. Well, do you do you have someone like that now? Um, I'm working okay. with James quite a bit. He's helping you out. Yeah. He's, well, isn't he's that a fucking uh, conflict of interest over there? Because is he truly committed to you considering he's still active on the tour? 
Well, he's 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 half. I think he's half coach, half player at the minute. Not sure about that, Pat. That seems like a conflict of interest. <laughs> but, well, I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever stop playing. To be honest, but, uh, I think he enjoys it too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I work with Josh Taylor over in Manchester. And I work with David Campion, who's national coach. So I've got those. That they, then those mm-hmm. two give me input as well. They're both great. But James has um, been, yeah, helping you out. Yeah, he's been he's been running the sessions down at Ponty. And um, he's been giving us his input, like mm-hmm. not just me, like to the group. Yeah. So we're picking his brain now. Well, on the topic of, I want to talk to you about the uh, England squash, especially on the men's side of things. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you have any. Stein out. <laughs> no beer in that. <sighs> Sorry. But. No. Bug, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finds a bug. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll never know about that. But um, what what do you what do you think is missing in England squash that you know hasn't produced top players recently? And I want you to be you know selfishly speaking. Do you feel that England squash could do more for their players? And how would that look like for you? Um, I'm, I'm not sure because I'm not sure what they're doing at the the grassroots level do you know what I mean uh-huh. I think that's where it all starts I think there was a period where maybe they weren't putting enough into that so so maybe when Nick James Daryl were all in the top 10 Barker yeah like maybe maybe they kind of thought take a step back and we don't have to worry because England are producing cruising players, through yeah, yeah we've got nothing yeah we've got nothing to worry about yeah so that that little period might have meant that now once they've retired we're playing a bit of a catch-up I do think they've realized that and they're putting more effort into like because it all starts from like for me I started at six mm. so that's where it starts really that's how you well Mal-, Mal used to say if you want to be wait what did he say he used to say if you want to be world class you have to start by three I think what <laughs> yeah I was like what Wait, you can't even hold a racket at three. <laughs> well, no, no, yeah, like you should be on court, like, like listening, to, listening the to the sound of the ball. Have a racket. <laughs> yeah, have a racket in your hands. Yeah, but I, I was three years too late, so I'm slacking. That's that's that's, years, that's the crazy. reason. That's the reason right now. Yeah, you're not world number one. Yeah, but I do, I do think um, they are putting like effort into like fixing things mm-hmm. on the grassroots level, and then they're doing a lot of work with like. Like the talent pathway leading up to the top of juniors, then like progressing into professional squash, it's different from from when I was uh, a junior. Oh, you think but, it's a lot better yeah. right now with how they're running the junior program? I think I think I think it is. Yeah, I think they're keeping an eye on a lot more, a lot more like uh, the depth in England. Who do you think from the juniors that we should be keeping an eye out for? Um, <clears throat> you're talking under nineteen. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'll um, I'll be I'll be biased, but I do believe that they're going to be good. But yeah. we know Sam's. Sam's Who's gonna that? Be all right, Sam. Um, oh, what's, his, uh, what's his name? Sam Todd. No, don't think I've heard of him, but yeah, no, I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I was going to say him anyway. But yeah, no, he's uh, no, he... he's that. De- yeah. Well, the thing is, he's already had such traction from day one, from yeah, yeah, from everywhere. Yeah, he won his first British Junior Open. Yeah. And I guess he's, he's been the guy. Yeah, he reinserted England back in the map, especially in the junior circuit when with his rise. But do you think there are yeah. others that we should be looking an eye out for? I think the, the the lad he played in the the final of the English the, or the British mm-hmm. recently is is showing a lot of um, promise. It's, his name's Finley Willington. Yeah, and then we've got Saran uh, Saran Nagim, who's both they're both northwest. That's why I say I'm being biased. Oh, okay, I know okay. them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's having a lot of tough matches with Tori at the minute. Wow. So those those two um, are looking like they're going to improve. Well, it's crazy uh, to see quickly. the uh, women's tour. Yeah. They're England's on fire right now. Um, yeah, doing all right, aren't we? Yeah, both senior and junior yeah. circuit. Men need to uh, step it up, catch up, don't we? <laughs> yeah, step it up. <laughs> but I think yeah, we got we got no one in the top twenty-five at the minute, have we? Yeah, but real close. All of you guys are real close and cracking. You know, yeah. That, that sound. <laughs> so far away. Yeah. yeah. But also a follow-up is, um, 
you guys all seem to get re- like get along really well for Team England. Is that really the case, or are you guys just putting up an act? Um, <laughs> I want to say it was an act. Too, it, but, um, who's I don't know. Why, why well, do you think that? Well, I, I, I don't know. I think I might just be comparing it with you guys in Egypt, but I think you guys are much more of a group when you guys travel together and just being able to talk to you, um, and Sam. You guys just seem like a closer knit group. Yeah, I guess so. Um, well, we did, we we've spent a few years in what we called at the time like the academy squad. So this was the this was the squad below, like Nick James, Pete Barker. Is, is this new? okay? So sorry, I asked this question because you know let's let's be honest. Uh, James Wilstrop and Nick Matthew didn't really have the greatest of relations. Um, in terms of, I, I always thought you know squash players were very individual, but it seems more so with England right now that you guys are more of a you know group. Um, I don't, I, if that's how it looks, I don't think so. That's not the case. I don't. Yeah, I yeah. don't think that is the case. Okay. No. You have to be. You have to be really individual yeah. and selfish if you want to be. Oh, if you want to be good. Yeah. 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 So we we travel together. We we're good. Like we're friends. But then there's also the part where you think we're all competing against each other. Mm-hmm. If if we if we draw each other in in a tournament, not talking like, to them. You, ha- you have to you have to switch on yeah. like I hate you mode. <laughs> no, <not really. laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I th- obviously, I'm. Uh, yeah. But when you train together, like we can make out like we did a few years ago in the academy squad. Like mm-hmm. you do become closer. But then there's all that. That stuff, like I've just said, um, you're you're all competitors. Yeah, you, to, you guys are all yeah, trying to think, make a living off of this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. very competitive. Um, but no, we all we all dislike each other, don't we? So thank you for the clarification. <laughs> it's clearly misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, um, it is all for show. But um, explain happy families. <laughs> Wait, so I, I got to mention this. Um, so what's going on with three hundred five squash? Uh, I saw that um, you have your own racket which is fucking nuts how uh, how'd that come about walk us um, through the process of an yeah. athlete who has uh, his own signature line i don't yet i have my own signature t-shirt i thought you have your but own n- racket isn't that your racket it's not no not uh, oh, that might fuck. be that Sorry. might be coming in the future okay that might be coming in the future okay right. no. um but at the minute it's just those two are the the starter like rackets for the company so yeah tell us um, tell us about this Okay, so 305 Squash started as a clothing brand. It's a Northwest-based um, company, and they used to sponsor me as a junior. Mm-hmm. I think when I was 14. Well, okay, yeah, even when I was a junior, I remember 18. I saw Diego or someone with 305. Yeah. This it was like the Elite Clothing or something, and then seeing how they're yeah, branching yeah, out. Yeah, now. So yeah, yeah. So at, at one point, at one point, at one British Junior Open, I think me, Naila, Diego, Lucy Beecroft, and Marion Metwali. Mm-hmm. We're all we're all sponsored by three hundred five clothing at the BJO. So at that point, yeah, it was it was like the probably the best it it was at the time. But then I obviously went to Unsquashable mm-hmm. for a few years because I was for whatever reason I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, he 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 approached me and said he, he's going into equipment. And I, I, I believed in it. I, I, um, I believe in helping a company progress. And like I helped, like I helped develop the the rackets and bags. And like if if a racket is to my like liking, I didn't I didn't really see like how I couldn't. I've been friends with his name's Joel Joel Shields, mm-hmm. who own, owns the company. I've been friends with him for a while, so I went for it. So you had a major so, yeah, input in making the rackets. Yeah, it was like. We spent most of the lockdown, the uh, the second lockdown, I think, mm-hmm. but, like developing the the rackets and bags. But and then it's yeah, not your put... signature racket. No, so first season was just it starts off as the the two like original rackets, and then we progress to if I get good enough, <laughs> if I get my name out there. Um, I'll uh, I'll make a signature racket. <laughs> well, I, I thought it was a I thought it was a brilliant move on your part it's, because it, to me it seems like you're the face of the brand, you and Lucy right now. But yeah, yeah. Um, 
it was yeah it wasn't even like that it was it was it was more me thinking i really like this idea i really want to get on board with what 305 are doing and mm. help like develop products and like get it out there and use it so it's, if you believe in something it i think it's what i should do yeah well you know quite, quite a cool looking racket as well yes yeah, i mean have you heard about have you heard about the spin no we T- tell me about this so you know so you know the traditional spins you got right left up down yeah yeah when yeah you... so on this one on our rackets it's three or five. Oh, that's brilliant <laughs> how good is that how good is that so do you make sure you always spin it when you right after one yeah i mean I, I try to get in there first but sometimes i don't <laughs> but i always insist on doing it just so i can say it three or five yeah, yeah three or five <laughs> That confused that confused the fuck out of me if I was like warming up and you're like three or five and I'm Well, like, yeah, yeah. I said it I said it once to someone and um they didn't hear me properly and they said, uh, down. <laughs> so I had to just play along and pretend it was down. Well then if that's the case, funny. you know, you just you just decide who was Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I got the serve, yeah. No, I got the serve, yeah. Do you do you favor having the serve first when you start? Is that a thing? Um yeah, yeah, I like having the surf first. Yeah, yeah. It, it you know gives you control how the how the first rally is going to go. Yeah, so I can serve out. If I want to. When is but the yeah. last time you served no. out? Or have you ever served out on the professional circuit? Are you asking me that because you know I have? Or I genuinely have no fucking clue. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I like to do a lob serve on my backhand, so I I serve out quite a lot. Oh, sorry. I didn't know this was a really sensitive topic. I... <laughs> I should have said before the podcast. Not Don't to talk ask about this. my serve. <laughs> Don't ask me about my serve. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like to document it though. I'm, I'm, I'm capturing every serve out I do. So I like to uh, make a little <laughs> compilation at the end of my career. Every, every serve uh, out I've done. That'd be fucking uh, brilliant. Um, wait, so Pat, so you've had an, you had an active junior career. Do you always want to go pro from day one or... Were, were there doubts in you? And a follow-up question to that is, I have so many kids who are in the college route right now. Is that a route that you considered as well? Um, it it kind of was always um, in the back of my mind to go pro because, yeah. I don't know, I just I felt like I put loads of effort into this, so I'm, I'm going to do it fully. Yeah. I'm gonna go full time. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that was always not the plan, but that was always what was going on in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, what was the other question? I forgot about uh, U.S. college oh, squash. Yeah, yeah. Had, had nope. schools poached you? <laughs> Did they poach you for? Um, I think I don't know what by approached, but I think everybody gets approached. If you're at the British Junior Open, I think you everybody gets approached pretty much. Sorry, yeah, I, so, I never got oh. approached. So. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was an actual. Well, I didn't. I also didn't play approach. in the British Juniors, so. Oh, uh, but so well, you you why. were you were con- you were <laughs> contacted, some... but you were not even considering it. Yeah, I didn't consider it. Um, I think that was because I had it in my head that I wasn't uh, smart enough. My grades weren't good enough. Uh-huh. And I, yeah, so I just didn't bother. But it, at the time, it's kind of like if you if you really go to squash, you could get into a U.S. college just on that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that's the case. Now, if you were to do it, do it again, would you? Yeah. Would you go to the U.S. or are you, are you happy Ooh, with the, um, the route you took? I mean, there's nothing wrong with either options, but I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. No. Yeah. I think I think I'm not that good enough to get through u.s college and still be good yeah i think i don't know i think i think for me it would have to be all or nothing that's fair yeah that's fair so i'm yeah yeah i think i I think i chose right it looks fun yeah well i asked this because it's really gaining attention the past three four years so i guess it didn't really even lap into your time but as of late it seems well when i was uh, 18 like Gina was going off. She was the same age group. She mm. was in, going to Harvard, so I knew a lot of people were thinking about it and doing it. I just uh, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna move into the quick fire segment. I don't know if you know this, okay. but we're just gonna ask a bunch of 
for questions and we'll see what Pat thinks. All right. Okay. Yeah. So you're 10, 10 down in the fifth. Do you go for it or you play it out? Uh, I'm 10 down. Yeah. You're about to get bagel in the fifth. Go for it. You're going 100% for it. 100% go for it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised you picked that. <laughs> I'm not wasting time. <laughs> get the hell out of there. Yeah. Um, torture. What are your thoughts? I have been I have been 10 down and I I did lose the point. By going for it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd I don't know if I'd go for no, it. it. I it's always in the back of my mind. If I go four four love down, I'm thinking, all right, I've got to get a point. I don't want to get don't want to get bagel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Priority number one is don't get don't bagel. Don't get bagel. I have been bagel before. Yeah. Um yeah. sorry. <laughs> Quick fire, sorry. No, it's not really quick fire. It's really just All right. chatting about. Um, what are your thoughts on best of three? Mm, best of three. Not a fan in terms of spectators. I think it's too short. Five. I think so, yeah. yeah. If, but then you say that some tournaments, it has been good for spectators, but I think in general. I think I prefer best of five for a spectator's point of view. Yeah, well, if you, if you think Canary Canary Warp has incredible spectator, but I think regardless of best of three or best of five, it's going to bring in incredible spectators. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I don't really think it's the argument of best of three or best of five. No. But um, next one is thoughts on doubles. Enjoy enjoy it. Um, I think it does have a place. It's exciting to watch. Um, I'm not that good at it. So that's those what. What does it take to be good at it? Like, does it, it takes um, does it, a lot of like straight like trans trans over? Like, if you're a good squash player, do you automatically become a good doubles? You player? kind of half. You kind of half have to take your single stuff over to doubles, but you have to play in a different way. So I'm I'm learning that at the minute. I'm still learning that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we play practice matches against the the Scottish. And they're they're really good. Yeah, they've got the ba- they've got the balance of mixing doubles and singles just right. So I'm trying to get that. Do you think they should add it in tournaments in the platinum tournaments? I mean, I, I know there's no money in it, but well, if they, if if they made a doubles doubles tour, yeah, then definitely. And it and it was say say you know hard hardball hardball doubles in um, America. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. obviously you know that. Um, like that's that's a very well paid. Sport. Yeah, it's big. Um, yeah, so if they had something like that in like in the world scene, I think that's a yeah great idea. Yeah. So if you were participating in doubles, who would yeah. you pick as your partner? Sam. Probably <laughs> Sam. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's. Do you think we've already got? He's, he's a good doubles player. I think we've yeah we've got that you know we've already got that relationship yeah. in place where we can where we can tell each other. if we're being shit or we can tell each other <laughs> if it's a good shot and then I think we both understand the way we play and how, how we want to play mm. would we're both like positive like on court I think it would gel quite well so in that, um, in that scenario who would, who would take the uh, backhand side I would choose Sam, uh, no me for the backhand mm. I would choose Sam for forehand yeah, yeah. personally Got it. I think I, I think my accuracy Partnered with his power and accuracy on the uh, on the forehand would be a good mix. Yeah. Personally, hey, do you prefer solo practice or practicing in groups? I prefer solo practice at the minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, get get my headphones on, zone out, and like try and just try and improve that way. But then it'll get to a point where I get bored of that and I'll yeah. go back to group sessions yeah, in phases. Thoughts on commentators for squash? Commentators. Uh, I think, oh, I think, I think it's worth adding some, adding some things into commentary where people who haven't watched squash before know what's going on. Yeah, no. Yeah. That's a good point. It's when, yeah, when whenever I've watched, like to us, it's we know all all the like intricacies of squash. Mm-hmm. 
so we get we get everything but like we're trying to bring in new viewers yeah and sometimes like i've i've, I've watched i've watched it with people who've never watched squash before and, like they they don't they don't know they're what's fucking going lost, on. yeah yeah so they, they so if someone gets a stroke and they're like what is what the hell has just happened yeah um but then it's it's good other than that but i think that's just a, a point um it's yeah. worth thinking about i think what do you consider doing commentating it's not your thing i would i would either end up swearing or saying something sarcastic that probably i thought was funny but isn't funny <laughs> and then my voice is quite annoying i think no nah, but everybody think everybody thinks that about their own voice but yeah yeah, yeah. that's true yeah um nicknames for psa players and what do you think your nickname should be what do i think my nickname should be <clears throat> i've been called well i don't want it to be this but i've been called the albatross yeah that's let's not go for that one yeah but we yeah because i've got long arms and my wingspan so i've been yeah. called that but yeah not a biggest fan um not sure um i would go for the the no have you got any for me dude i was thinking about this what earlier think? I, th- I i think i got a good go on, one then. for you i think you should, people should call you the ghost the ghost yeah why I think it's just something, you know, about how your deceptive attacking play, just something about also your white racket and kind of the fits. The phantom. Yeah. Kind of like the ghost. Yeah, okay, I'll, t- I'll take that on board. Patty the ghost. But if you're ever commentating, just I know they really got, like push the ghost. There's no way I can, they're allowing me in that commentator's booth with my foul wow. mouth. <laughs> but you need a bit of foul mouth. We do. No, but, you don't. What, 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 do you, what do you think uh, in general of nicknames? Are you a fan? I'm not a fan of everybody on the PSA having a nickname, mm. but I'm fa- I'm a fan of if you earn a nickname, that's cool. I think over say over say a long period of time, or or a really good reason as to why you've got that nickname, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. But then, but then, like forcing nicknames on every player, which has been happening it, as of late. Yeah, I, th- I, used to, I think. Oh, oh no, there's a player in the top twenty who hasn't got a nickname. Fuck, we got it. We got to. What, what, what can he? What can we call him? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah. But I think nicknames are cool, like the marksman. Or yeah. Well, the, the, the original ones, the marksman, uh, the wolf, the general. These yeah. are all incredible. But nowadays, yeah. it's just yeah. I mean, it's, it, it started from Jonah, didn't it? Yeah, I believe he st- he he would nickname his opponents, mm-hmm. um, which I think like it's a good idea. But if you're calling someone, I'm trying to think of an example, calling someone, help me out. Well, <laughs> so Andrew Andrew Douglas was on a, couple, uh, a month or two back, and he was saying there's a player who's nicknamed Tinkerbell on the women's tour, and he was just like, "Is that really?" Think about it. Yeah, it's not really. Um, is that uh, questionable? Who, who, who got nicknamed that? I know? think it was Rowan or Robbie. Right. Could be. Maybe she light on her feet or something. Or... Yeah, something on the lines of that. But it's just. She, does fairy dust come off her racket? <laughs> but I don't know. They, I think they can do a better job. Right? Like, or just let, just say her name. There's nothing wrong with yeah, just saying. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Just don't, just don't force it as much. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on coaching post career? Um, could could be a good option. Uh, just I've not put much. I've not had much experience, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm into it now. I never used to be. I used to be very against coaching. I didn't think it was for me. Oh, but you are kind of into it now. I'm I'm I'm, lear- I'm learning and getting experience that is helping me come on is, board. Is uh, yeah. Elliot Elliot giving you the pointers? No, he didn't give me points. I just kind of watch him and like that, see how he I could it. do that. That doesn't look too hard. Yeah, I, well, yeah. You just got to make stuff up. <laughs> I've got to convince this kid that <laughs> oh, I'm joking. <laughs> no, he's really good, Elliot. He's really good. Yeah, no, he's a phenomenal coach. <laughs> Most underrated player on tour right now. Underrated? Yeah. Nathan Lake. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. He is. Hundred percent. I right? think. I think he has been for a year, years actually. Well, it's because he's been playing just tournaments in the U.S. and just been sweeping him, and then 
yeah, I haven't yeah. really seen him. I think he goes he fly, well, not maybe not so much now, but he, he's flying under the radar. Yeah, of how good he is. Oh yeah, we'll uh, definitely yeah, get him on. That's my quick pick. Yeah, well, that was that was the quickest. Now, yeah. most overrated player on tour right now. Overrated player on tour. Um, <laughs> me. Oh, Pat, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> um, ooh, overrated player. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah, but overrated who cares? Player. They're not going to listen to us. Do you already have someone in mind? But no, no, we we got all the time in the world. But I was just thinking, like, <laughs> does Pat have a name? But he's just not saying it right now. No, I don't. I actually don't have a name. All right. Well, dude, fuck. No one's been answering this question since like episode seven. I'll keep thinking. I'll keep thinking. But I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm switching. One. I'll switch the question. One player that you would you hate playing against. I hate playing against would have to be. Hate. Oh, please. Oh, Waller, <laughs> Adrian Waller. Yeah, you guys, you had some tough ones. What, what about it? What about his game? Is it the left hand that, that gives you a hard time? Or? No, no, it's just, um, yeah, he's, he's good at, I think his game combats my game quite well. Okay. If I, if, if I, if I play the way I want to play against him, he, he's got all the, the counters for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously like losing to him three times in a row, you he start you start to become the my most hit, like hated player yeah, to play. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, so we're gonna move on to some life related questions. Um so you're shipwrecked on an island, all your basics are covered. What are the two things you bring with you? A banana and a a some kind of music system that has every song in the world on. Okay, yeah. wait, first of all, why, why a banana? Why a banana? <laughs> Is that your favorite Just, fruit? Uh, nutrients. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just keep, well, that's keep tough. I, was, I thought you were going to mention 305 squash, but clearly uh, you don't believe in the product. If that's <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. 305 bag. Sorry. Yeah, 305 grip, just in case. No, um, <laughs> if you had to change your name, what would it be, and why would it be the name? I'd go for Pablo... Um, Smith. Okay, you want to you want to expand here? <laughs> no, I just made it up. I just made it up. Pablo Smith. Kind of like Spanish Spanish names, and then yeah, Smith Smith's a good strong name. I thought you were gonna yeah. go for Escobar or some name. shit. No, <laughs> that did pop into my head. But... No. Um, well, yeah, I think I think I mean I'd be pretty satisfied with your own name. You got a legendary uh, football player. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like my name. To yeah, be fair. but that was the um, question. Was it? Yeah. Do you like your name? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, did you see that um, the TikTok? Which one? I, I what am okay. I saying? I don't even. I don't. I don't do TikTok. All right. Well, oh, yeah. PSA posted a um, a TikTok uh, yesterday or the day before, and everybody thinks it's Wayne Rooney. Oh. No. Yeah. So it's that been like attracting so a lot the of comments? Are like. Yeah, so all the comments are like, "What the fuck? This isn't Wayne Rooney? Oh, well, Wayne Rooney's got hair again." Wait, I'll, I'll go funny. check that out. That's fucking hilarious, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay, next one is: if you knew tomorrow was your last day to live, what would you do, and what would be your last meal? Uh, what would I do? What would I do? I can't say what I'd do. <laughs> So, yeah, I'd do that. And then, um, I'd, for my last meal, I'd get a really large steak. I love steak as a as a mm-hmm. like, special treat. So that would be my treat. How do you like your steak done? Go medium rare. Medium rare. Can't go wrong and, with that. Um, some some bits on the side. Starter. You got wow, just as much food as a good fit into a few hours. It'd be like garlic bread, calamari, like chicken wings, steak, sweet potato fries. Oh, sweet potato fries. That's a good one. Um, maybe like a really nice cheesecake or something to, to finish, finish it off. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. And what, 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 would the drink of, what would the drink of choice be? Just straight vodka? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No chance. <laughs> um, okay, I'll start off with a glass of milk. <laughs> and I'll go into... Um, uh, what would I go into? A Lucas Aid after that to hydrate, <laughs> then a spice rum and coke, 
then this is the oddest combo combination of drinks. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to fit in. You've got to fit in all your favorite things in one. And then what would I finish off with? Just a beer. The beer. That's, that's quite. Yeah, that's quite the cop. Uh, yeah. All right. West, sit well on the stomach. Yeah. Best and worst purchase you've ever made. Worst purchase. Best purchase. What my cop? Uh, no, I didn't purchase that. Um, best purchase I've ever made would be probably these. These are, these are really good, aren't they? The Generation One AirPods. Yeah, Generation <laughs> One. How long I've had these? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or my, I like. I've got a salt lamp in my room. That, that, was, that was a really good purchase. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying that was the worst purchase. I was like, what? <laughs> no, no, that, that was also the best. <laughs> worst purchase. Um, I bought this. Um, I bought this app that. <laughs> well, you already went wrong like, there. Who buys apps these days? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, it's like it's meant to help you sleep. Uh-huh. Like one of those apps. Yeah. Well, like and, um, yeah. It was like a thirty pound, like to buy it, and then there's like subscriptions on top, and yeah, Damn. I've never used it. I never. Used like, what does it. it do? Like nature sounds. Yeah, you've got options on there. You've got nature sounds and like yeah, weather sounds and people telling you stories, relaxing voices, stuff like that. Yeah, and I've never used it. Do you have trouble sleeping? So I, sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes. But that's what that that was on the day. That was why I bought it, and then yeah, then I fell asleep straight after buying it, <laughs> and then never used it. <laughs> so he doesn't have problems. <laughs> no. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Um, all right. Favorite British slang. Favorite British slang. Um, I would go for. British slang. Uh, come back to that one. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. One. Um, biggest pet peeve. How many dishes in the uh, in the sink? Yeah, that's that's a good one. <laughs> Are you, are you very uh, organized, a clean guy? Uh, not necessarily. Just just dishes in the sink. I'm looking at my sink right now, and my this is for my roommate. So when he sees it, <laughs> is, he, is he a squash player? Who's it? Who's your roommate? Uh, no, not really. No, he's just some random guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's pray he tunes into this one. Yeah, he will. Don't worry. <laughs> Favorite non-squash athlete. Non squash athlete at the minute. Yeah. Probably go Trent Alexander Arnold. Okay. Right back to Liverpool. You a big Liverpool fan? Um I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Just a fan. I'm say huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, him at the minute, yeah. And then favorite squash athlete that's active right now. Oh shit. Just, just you like how he plays? Yeah, I like how he plays. Yeah, he's, a, Got it. he's you know he's a good sportsman. Yeah, he's a nice guy as well. Gotcha. He's cool. He's cool. That's that's obviously a factor that needs to be accounted <laughs> yeah. for. All right, so we're gonna transition into some Instagram questions I got to wrap it up. And before we do that, I want to one last time go back to. Who Pat thinks is the most overrated player on tour? Oh, I said to think about it, I didn't. <laughs> overrated player on tour. Okay, let me think. Uh, George Parker. Got it. We're not going to go yep. into that. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go into the Instagram questions. I think we got to address the first one that I put a little poll action on Instagram. Big shout out to Sam Toff for such an intellectually challenging and oh, scholarly man. question. Um, <laughs> I put on the poll is the how many McDonald's chicken McNuggets could he eat in an hour? Yeah. Yeah, was that him? So ha- have you done this challenge? I haven't no, but would would try. Do you want me to try and then get back to you? I would love you to try and document this. <laughs> okay. I confidently think you can. I, I got a couple of DMs from my friends saying that uh, you can't do that. That's impossible. Well, well, you think you think you can because it's only a chicken nugget, but then if you think. You can buy twenty boxes in England. I don't know what the the max. Yeah, is. I think it's yeah. I think it's some forty. I don't know. I'm not sure actually. Forty, right? Okay. Such a such clean eater out here. So. Yeah, yeah, true. 
No, I didn't know that. I got told about the, uh, <laughs> the 20 nugget box. Um, <laughs> so if you if you eat that box of 20, then you've got to do that four more times. So I don't I don't know. <clears throat> I would have to be I would have to be like really really empty like not. Yeah. Not no. Okay. Empty. Let's let's for, yeah for dinner. You haven't had dinner going in. Yeah. Well, okay. How about this? I'll do it. I'll let and then you do it. Should we, you, yeah. We both do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I'll fucking post it on the Instagram about how I'll I do it. Do. I'll do it after my US tournament. Okay. The, well, the day, we'll, the we'll, day after we'll keep Chicago. you. We'll keep you to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm gonna start off with someone who DM'd me a question because they said the question's too long. Do you think that a more aggressive and creative style such as yourself and Sam Todd have an, been an important factor in your success? And do you think this is a natural progression of English English squash and something that should be coached and encouraged for more PSA success as opposed to classic English style, which has been promoted for very long? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, we should be playing more positive, I think. Do you think that um, yeah. style of play before is just out, it's, it's outdated kind of, for the modern? Yeah, modern, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you that, well, the whole thing about when I was a junior and like the Egyptians were like fully coming through. I think one of my British junior opens like they won all eight titles. Um, yeah. So like, like in England, we we were, yeah, you're taught to like play straight drives and play straight drops. Yeah, like, that was like, you know a simple way of playing. So. Their attacking style has completely, like, took like taken over. I think definitely England like juniors should look at playing more positively if we want to take on Egypt in the future. Yeah. So yeah. you're sending a little message to English juniors to oh yeah to yeah. watch you play play, play cross court to watch you play mix. not 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 others no 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 don't watch me play do, <laughs> like do it your own way <laughs> play play like how you want to play yeah. but be be positive be attacking. And like learn different skills and yeah, control the ball. Mm -hmm. like Wait, Pat, who who is your best friend? Like, well, who's my best friend? Yeah, in the whole wide world. Yeah, just one one person. It's um, it is a toss up at the minute between about seven people. Jesus, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> um, I, my roommate probably. Yeah. Sorry, Elliot. He did not pick you for his best friend. Yeah, man. no. Sorry, Elliot, about Elliot. That even though he asked this question, it'll be it'll be gutted. But he's got Sam, so <laughs> his, his his family. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Ben Coleman asked this: Have you always sh shadow sparred as part of your squash <laughs> warm up routine? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Want to yeah. give a backstory so, to this? What's going on here? Uh, I before I leave my room. Um, I shadow box before I go to my match. <laughs> Guys, that's that's what it takes to be world number twenty eight. You gotta got start shadow. Box. That, is, that is actually all it takes. Just that. Oh um, no, yeah, that's just a little ritual before I leave the hotel room. I um, couple of jabs. I do a bit of that, yeah. And if 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 I'm if I'm sharing a room with someone, I have to go into the, um, the bathroom to do it. You, you gotta lock. <laughs> yeah, I don't like people seeing me do it. So. But once I sent I sent a video to Ben Coleman of me doing it, so that's how he knows about that. <laughs> oh, it's too good. Um, yeah, this guy Andre asked, does he think he could keep up physically with the likes of Paul Cole and Ali Farag in the future? That'd be odd for Pat to say no to that question, but <laughs> well, I think yeah, it's in a different way though. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm ever going. I don't think I'm ever going to be the athlete. Um, Paul Cole is like I'm a, I'm mm -hmm. a different I'm a different player and a, like he's obviously I don't think I'll ever be that much of a, a machine but I'll be able to keep up in a different way I think yeah definitely it's a good answer yeah um yeah. fuck I'm gonna butcher this but who's your favorite Chilshi brother and why <laughs> uh, my favorite Chileshi brother is Chilesh. damn that's not the person who asked this but uh <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> um, real quick one. Uh, pumpkins galore. Shout out. String tension. Twenty-four. Ooh, it's pretty low. Loose. Yeah. Uh, Oliver CP asks: Is it vital to be a good junior to be a top pro? 
No. No. Yeah. Not necessarily. No. Yep. And we're seeing it's, it. It's been done before. And yeah. It can be done again. Yeah. Well, okay. Sorry if I couldn't get to all of your questions, guys. Only picked out a couple. But, um, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there, folks. Thank you, Pat, for joining in. Um, yeah. We'll catch you next week.